Alrighty then, it's time for a double video of Gragas and Zenzao. And you'll enjoy both of these because I deal with cheese. In the form of Jungle Twitch. Now, I thought it was probably going to be like Jungle Cho'Gath and mid Kog'Ma and bottom lane Twitch. But it turns out to be Jungle Twitch. And I told my teammate, he might be stealing red. You might be wanting to guard it because he'll probably try to gank you at level 2. Watch for that. And, you know... He didn't do that, and very obviously it was stolen given top lane came in late. And then they killed him, because you know, helping out the jungler just a little bit is so hard. Just go to your lane, and then I'll tab and leave, right? Just go, go do something else. So yeah, that was a failed body slam. What are you going to do about it? But either way, there's one thing this, this Twitch doesn't know. I'm a fat man, and fat people can smell cheese a mile away. By the way... Yeah, uh, and th during the replay, I had a mistake in which the uh, the item screen sort of disappeared, and I couldn't bring it back for a little while. So let's just kind of ignore it for a little bit. Uh, anyways, in this particular game, although you can't see it, I'm gonna go tanky, right? I'm gonna be going with uh, the first AP item, the jungle AP item, the Lumen's Echo wannabe, and then be building Frozen Fist, essentially to make my bur initial burst as strong as possible while not maintaining a little, a little bit of tankiness. Plus a little bit of slow just to kind of widow the enemy team down and keep them from moving about. Their mobility is absolute trash, so it's going to be really effective. Anyways, the gank from the Twitch was pretty damn obvious, and although the Orianna died, I got a kill against the Twitch, and this super cocky Yasuo, I don't know, he uses a wind wall thinking that, that tornado was mine some, for some reason or whatever. And I don't throw my barrels at all, I'm just going to you know use my fat girth to destroy him. And no more emotes for you, Mr. Yasuo, ha. Huh? So, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, two kills. And if anything, easy squeezy, lemon peasy is something that Gragas would definitely eat. Anyways, at this point, Twitch is pretty damn behind. He isn't farming, even though he did get a, a couple kills and assist, he is not able to maintain levels. Also, Yasuo makes his way top lane, which is super e obvious, and once again, I just use my Fat Girth to stop him. Although I ended up using my Q2 little effect, I do get a good ultimate on him, and we destroy him. At this point, again, I've gained full control now of top lane. Yasuo has been checked, or Rihanna has basically been able to recover, and my god, it just the, the Twitch can't do anything. His gangs have, have become super predictable, and his damage has tapered off to the point where he can't survive, he can't just pop out and destroy somebody before things have gone bad. Or, I mean, before things can, you know, people can react to it. Anyways, I had top lane again because I knew Twitch would gank there. It was super obvious. Renekta made himself a really good target. And I killed the Cho'Gath alongside him too. So two more kills for the fat man. I'm, I'm being fed so much as if Gragas needs to be fed anymore. Steal the blue buff. Steal the uh, frog. I put a ward here and I'm surprised the Cho'Gath didn't really react to it. I body slam him, do quite a bit of damage, but not really significant enough. Still though, it, you know, it's a kind of a warning sign to him that I'll, I'll be coming back for seconds. Hey, hey. Ah, ha, ha. Which he doesn't, you know, actually heed. He should kind of realize that he's making himself super vulnerable. So I just kind of walk in, do a crap ton of damage, and then we slowly kill him. God, I gotta love it. Ooh, these barrels have been good. Even Renekton gets that kill. And by the way, Renekton's still kind of mad at the Oriana for some reason. Anyways. Heading towards mid, Yasuo's getting super aggressive against the Orianna, he flashes my body slam flash, and whatever. But at this point, he's also getting very aggravated, so hooray for us. Twitch comes in, kills the Orianna. At this point, I do have to retreat a little bit, but when Renekton comes from the side, my body slam misses because I thought Twitch was going to go that way, and we pick up a kill on, against the Yasuo. And now we're able just to sort of bulldoze through mid lane. Needless to say, the enemy team is gonna has no chance of winning. This is the, one of the reasons I really don't like this kind of cheese tactics for junglers. Because, okay, picture Kane. Kane and Master Yi are junglers that are pretty high roll. You gotta get that good start going. You gotta get that, uh... You gotta get that good start going, and you gotta make sure not to fall behind or fall apart. And if you, if you maintain that, and you get a little bit of a lead, you can absolutely run away with the game, but it takes quite a bit of effort and some luck, especially taking into consideration of who you end up being matched against. Now, a jungler like Jungle Twitch or some other crap like that, similar in similar nature of just you know roam, running around and focusing on purely on ganks, is extremely high roll. 
in which a lot of things have to go well for you and your matchup is even more disgusting and a lot of the times that doesn't work one of the biggest factors being that your opponent has to be absolutely inept in order for things like this to completely work out or that your team has to be so on point that they basically babysit you even though you're handing them some kills early on in the game i just don't like jungle twitch occasionally i have played it in the past because i'm not going to deny it's kind of fun sometimes to just run around being a giant dick and killing everybody but you cannot be denied that it is uh super risky and not risky in the super rewarding way more often than not you'll probably get punished against opponents who are you know paying attention so yeah this twitch got absolutely destroyed it's essentially removed from the game and can no longer bring anything to bear my team isn't incompetent so we're at the very most going to maintain our momentum although that barrel kind of disproves the incompetent thing but yeah so essentially put He's, he's done. He's out. My team isn't going to give him any leeway to bounce back from this. The team as a whole is kind of going to lose because of this. Bottom lane sort of lost on their own, but mid and top lane uh, one, uh, one off the back of me coming in and destroying their lanes and, make, and resetting mid lane and killing the Twitch and keeping them in check. So yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's a done deal. And my build is good. Yeah, like I said, my build is reflecting, even though I could snowball and go full AP, it's more reflecting a, a build that's tried to maintain this momentum and not lose it just in case. Because again, in solo queue, you know, you can't completely go on a full, uh, take a full risk. Anyways, Yasuo is going to get super, you know, aggressive here because he feels he can kill the Sivir. And to his credit, he actually kind of does. I mean, he totally does. And then it leads to his death. And unfortunately, too. The Twitch actually pops up right on time because I thought, oh, you know, I could possibly kill the Kog'Maw and ignore these guys. They don't have enough damage. But just the Twitch combination with Kog'Maw and the Cho'Gath was enough to bring me low enough to get eaten. But then the, my, my teammates get revenge and essentially, you know, are pounding on the turret and all that good stuff. It is a dundee, right? So, yeah. Yasuo gets killed and the rest of the enemy team can't really do very much about this. And, yeah... Not, you know, like I'm saying, you can t definitely play super cheesy things if you really, really want to. But you have to understand that in most cases, if you pick it, if you pick it blindly, like this guy actually picked him really blindly. And the only hope he had that I would have picked some, somebody of a worse matchup was that I thought he was probably going to be just bottom lane. Is, is that it? That's it. If I knew for a shadow of a doubt it was jungle twitch, I might have picked some jungler who would have made his life even worse than Gragas did. Luckily, I picked Gragas, who's just kind of all general pick, and stomped the cheese out. So hooray. But now it's time for Zin Zhao. In this case, the cheese is more of a low level kind of thing. So one of the things that Kane players like to do is invade. And it kind of became very obvious he was going to invade because uh so because he started off on his red side we kind of saw that coming and that's why i was trying to rush this as quickly as possible and then he comes in and to be honest i kind of played that a little bit poorly because i let the fat uh, golem beat the shit out of me for a little while so i almost died but now imagine almost being dead and instead being hit by the blue buff a few times and then i still kill him if that didn't happen and if he didn't have the smite, I would have, you know, absolutely annihilated him. And now because of this, he's just going to lose his entire jungle. So hooray, Kane, you kind of shouldn't have invaded Xin Zhao. Now, when you guys have seen me play Kane, and this is an actual question that's been brought up, because in a lot of my Kane games and some jungler games, um, I always do this kind of low-level invasion, right? Clear my site and go in. Sometimes I clear red and immediately invade or do something like that. It's because I understand the matchup at play and I understand the potential strength that I could do as long as I approach something properly or quickly enough. And not all junglers are vulnerable to that. You know, that, that like a Xin Zhao is one of the deadliest low level junglers in the game or jungler duelist in the game period. If you approach him stupidly or, you know, or carelessly, you are going to fucking die. And I may bring up this point here because the Kane in all chat did say, you know, this usually works. It usually works. Him saying that just means that he always does that against all his opponents and that it works out. Because most opponents aren't paying attention or are as experienced. And I knew Kane would want to do that. A lot of Jungle Kanes try to do that all the time. I mean, I do it all the time. 
But I avoid doing it against really dangerous opponents, or in most cases, blindly. By the way, I love this. I knew Fizz was coming for the gank, so just using the explosive root plant, I catch him. I flash Q him there so he didn't, if wouldn't catch my rumble teammate and kill him. Beautiful double kill, if I do so say myself. So, right now, already snowballing. Then Kane comes in to try to kill the rumble, deals almost no damage, and misses one of his things. And then I stab him in the butt and kill him too. So, yay. By the way, look at my first purchase. Trinity Force. Yay. I don't even have boots, but I got a Trinity Force already. My my early game momentum is so absolutely stupid. The enemy team got essentially run over because the Kane essentially was made pointless. And like I said in the previous game from the Gragas, Kane is a high roll champion. Not as super high roll he is Jungle Twitch, uh, but being a high roll champion and then losing super early or losing your momentum super early kind of puts you out of the game. His only real hope is to go Rost and hopefully his team can do some kind of CC shenanigans to make up for the lack of damage that they're now having. But that's kind of difficult right now because I'm super fed and I'm super strong right now. And we have a Rumble who is ridiculous, who can just completely annihilate teams in a good day. And Yasuo who is honestly pretty competent. But yeah, the second I show up to most fights, I'm going to do way too much damage. And there's very little the enemy team can stop, uh, do to stop me. Again, their team already fell apart. They're losing on every front. At this point, you just got to assume they're going to surrender very quickly. I mean, we got... Look at all the towers. Look at all... Just look at the map control. Here, the, the Wukong comes in and can't even do enough damage to tickle the Caitlyn. And he just kind of explodes. Stealing blue buff, controlling the map, getting the dragon. Just disgusting. And it all came from the back of getting super high, super risky with the invasion and super risky with the engages and then making himself super open to all sorts of ganks. So hooray for Zin Zhao and hooray for Gragas for stomping out the cheese. And if you liked this video, remember to give it a like. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure to hit the little bell up there somewhere so you actually get notifications to my videos because YouTube and stuff.